This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. But today, we're going to pivot and talk about WrestleMania 11, specifically because of the news we got last week. News that we didn't expect that we had lost Scott Hall. And I kind of didn't know how to feel about that. Because on the one hand, I think everyone listening to this knows that Scott is now finally, and I mean finally, at peace. And that's a good thing. But I can't help but selfishly think, damn, I wish we had more time with him. So I'm, I'm glad that he's finally at peace, but man, I didn't expect it this soon. I didn't expect it this early. And, and I don't know, it feels weird to transition from funny, ha ha to a serious topic, but this is a guy you knew in real life. Mm. What, what'd you think when you, you saw the news that our friend had had three heart attacks and was in a bad way? I want to make sure and say, so what did I feel when I heard about the heart attacks? Not so much. About, well, heck, um, obviously we've become close. You know, I text you because it was just like, wow. Um, when my father, uh, we had that conversation, he called when Scott fell and went to the hospital to have hip surgery. And my dad said, yeah, we've had a good conversation man, I'd like to get him to come stay with me a couple of weeks. Um, you know, he, he lives by himself. And I, I, I just like, you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't optimistic that it was going to happen, but you know, him and my dad had a relationship. Uh, and I didn't realize how close they continued to be through, through, through the years. But anyhow, it, it's still, you know, Scott, it's no secret. He's had his struggles and ups and downs like all of us. Uh, Scots are uh, probably a, a little more public or a lot more public than a lot of folks. But, um, you know, <sighs> death and it's God almighty, because all last week and, you know, sitting on the beach or just thinking things through and um, processing it all. And, and we talked about death uh, la on last week's episode. Um, and, you know, uh, there's never, ever, a time, well, I haven't expect. You just go. What if? What if? What if? What if? The, you know, just and then you know, my last conversation with Scott, like, which? Wh what is the last time? And I've racked my brain. When is the last time I saw Scott? When is the last conversation? Um, but man, it, it in, in a lot of ways, I just sort of sat through, and then I sort of pivoted and started thinking of all the good times and this and that and what he what meant to me over the years, but. It's still, as we sit here recording this, you just think, oh, Scott and Kev, uh, they're still running that NWO. They're doing this. They're doing that. And and our text exchange, and we had little funny sayings go back and forth. And just the camaraderie and, you know, people ask me. I don't know, man. I know I'm rambling here, but no, it's, it, fine. It, it, it's, it's just so, um, on the one hand, if you back out of that selfishness, you hit the nail on the head, Scott. Uh, and we can try to analyze and Lord knows we all do that in our own funky way, but he is at peace. He is no longer dealing with, you can call them demons or, or he, it processing his past or all the, the ups and downs and what went through his head, but those days are over. So, um, rest easy, buddy, rest easy. It, it, uh, it sucks. It's still, that's, that's, that's the most simple term. I, I still, it sucks that he's gone. Did you read the, uh, wrestling observer obituary for Scott? I did not. I did I'm going to send it to you. I think you'll love it. There's oh, so much great stuff in there. There's one thing in particular that just stood out. Like, oh, wow. You know, a lot of times guys talk about wrestling IQ. And they'll say things like, oh, he had such a great mind for the business and this and that. But something I read in there just jumped off the page. I guess Waltman had talked to Mr. Meltzer and, and he said, you know, there was a lot of smart guys in that car, but he was probably the smartest of us all. And he gave an example that one of the things he would do as a television wrestler back in the days of the quote unquote squash match. It's not just go out there and run through the guy one move after another. 
but grab a hold. And that gave the commentators an opportunity to put you over and not just feel obligated to call the action. Because if you're just doing one move after another, they're trying to describe the action and talk about what's going on. But if you grab a headlock on a guy, well, now they can talk about you. I just thought, man, what wisdom to not want to say, man, let's go give them the best match possible. What wisdom to say, this is where you give those guys their chance to do their job and do right by you. I had never seen that explained anywhere else before. And it just made all the sense in the world. Those things we had heard for years and years that Scott Hall had one hell of a mind for the business. Boy, you ain't kidding. You know, they, uh, stoicism and philosophy, and they talk about the writings and how wisdom is passed down and you can read a book and gain a lifetime of wisdom in a sitting of reading or a couple hours of reading. And, you know, Scott in car rides or at bars or restaurants or airplanes or bus rides, wherever. And you, you think about, um, his mentors and he thought a lot of Kurt Henning and Kurt obviously grew up in the business. So Larry, the ax and Vern and the generations of whoever it may be, but it's, it's generation passed down to generation passed down. But those little nuances is what you're talking about. Um, I mean, Scott, you know, they, they talk about getting to the, uh, the WWE and working that style. I think Scott and Sean taught me more about the nuances of working that style. And I say more than a television product, but the little uh, example you gave right there, it's really how to get over mm -hmm. it, it. It's, 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 and I, God, this sounds, especially this day and age. Oh, it's not a move set and the flippy floppy. I'm not talking about all that, but it's, it's the things that you just pointed out. There's little things nuances that candidly, not just work today. I, I actually think they work better today because in the nineties, pretty much all talent was schooled. And when they came through the curtain, if it wasn't an agent, it was one of the boys or your opponent or whatever it is. There was some teaching on the spot nowadays, not so much because it's running and gun and it's blue. It's all that kind of stuff. So I think the little nuances that, Scott learned from Kurt and Scott taught me and passed down, passed down. I think it works better today, man. I, I, I do want to read that if you don't mind Conrad, because, because Scott's body of work, when you really drill down to it, he came, I, I don't say the right way, the wrong way, but man, he came up, learned the business, given the ball and man, did he succeed in a major reason. way? I mean. Oh God. Most everybody listening to this considers Shawn Michaels, either one a or one B greatest of all time. But Waltman, I mean, he was the measuring stick for a long time. Waltman Michael. would be the guy that they would, that they would stick out there with, with a newcomer. And then when he comes back through the curtain, look at Waltman, like, what do you think? And, and he would either give it a thumbs up or just sort of shrug. Like he ain't got it or he ain't ready yet. That sort of thing. Waltman was the measuring stick, but he said, Sean was better after working with Scott. I was better after working with Scott. Oh, for sure. Jarrett was better after working with Scott. And when you think about basketball, cause I know you're a big basketball fan. There are players who you'll hear guys say in hindsight now, oh, he made everybody around him better. Scott Hall's that guy in pro wrestling. For sure. For, for sure. You know, they talk about Larry legend, Larry bird. He, he, you know, one year they had 60 something wins and the next year he got hurt and was out. And this uh, panelist said, who do you think the MVP should be of this season? And the commentator said, Larry Bird. And they said, Larry Bird has missed 60 or 70 games. And he goes, that's my point. With Larry, everybody's better and they're dominant. Without Larry, remove one member of 12 and they're below 500. And so it, 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 that, that analogy that, that Scott raised everybody's game um, in so many kind of unique ways, because that's, that's the thing that, you know, I, I'll say this through the years, sometimes Scott 
was rough around the edges in delivery to some guys. And may, maybe he was, I don't say taken the wrong way. Maybe he delivered it the wrong way, but whatever. But Scott cared about every match on the card. And he'd go to the curtain, watch match two, match three, whatever it is. And he had no problem pulling the guy aside, whoever it was, and said, hey, I watched this, 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 and this. That's, that's caring. That's wanting the team to get better. That's checking your ego and say, hey, man, if this guy's better, we're all better. And Scott did that a lot. I mean, a whole lot. He And God, yeah, I can, there's, I mean, there's knowing we were doing this episode. I was thinking on, on it's yeah. There, there's so many little things he taught me on timing that can you give us an example, like just one little random one. I know I'm getting way in the green, in the weeds and granular or whatever we joke about, but that example of, Hey man, don't just hit the moves, grab a hold. So the announcers can put you over. God, that just clicked to me like, oh man, that makes total sense. But I've never heard that explained before. Uh, is there something like that? Maybe another nugget that he dropped on you that you carried with you for the rest of your career? I, I don't know that he came up, I don't say he came up with this, cause, but but he is the one who impressed upon me and Sean did, uh, uh, but, but Scott, because I was working with him, uh, you know what a double down. Boy, this is really yeah. inside baseball. Yeah, we know what a double down is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know when, when. So if 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 I'm the heel and there's a baby face and you give him a belly to back suplex and both guys are down, Scott said, "I know it goes against the grain, but don't move. Like don't move at all." I'm like, that kind of contrary to selling. You sort of still got to have motion because if you lay flat, you're dead. Don't dead sell, you know, they're, they're all the, they're, but it's a nuance that when there's a time to be motionless, see how the silence works. I, I gave the example is cause then you go what's next. Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, so if, 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 if Scott and Jeff are laying completely flat in the ring and nobody's moving and the referee's looking the fans innately emotionally go, oh shit. Okay. And, 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 and the timing of the referee getting to three and four and Earl Hebner, he was, Kyoto's good. All of them were good, but, but the referee, it, you talk about uh, conducting an orchestra and it's literally like the conductor. If everybody's flat and Scott's like, I'm telling you, dude, Jeff, the way we have this pace in this match, don't move that kind of nuance. And he impressed upon me, hey, you move too soon. Don't move on two, move on six tomorrow night. Okay, I'll give it a shot. It worked. It worked so good that you go, oh, wow. And I know that I've taught numerous guys, hey, trust me, we're going to do this spot. And when we go down, I'm telling you, don't move. J just I, I, not a leg, not an ankle, not an arm, not a wrist. Lay flat, dead. Yeah. And the people come. That, that That's... Uh, yeah, I could, there's a couple. I mean, there, there's an, a, another one, too. We used to do this spot outside. This is back before uh, wireless mics, Conrad. So Chimmel would be at ringside or the ring announcer beside, and, you know, the cord to the mic. And Scott would go over, and, uh, you know, we're fighting outside, and he would buzz the guy and, like, Chimmel, turn your mic on. We don't want whatever. Just it's, it's a hot mic. Be ready. And we're fighting over there, and I would pick it up, and hit him on the side of the head with it, and it would make a boom, boom. I can't do it with this mic, but I mean a real good sound, and the people would, ooh, but it's one hit, and he said, don't do anything else, Jeff. No punch, no kick. Roll in the ring and let that last thing they hear is that sound, and he would lie flat outside, and I'd we'd milk it, milk it, milk it, and then when the referee started the count, he wouldn't move to let the people sink in. This is going to be a flat-ass count out. They didn't move Is that too inside baseball. Does that make no, sense? No, I love it. And that's, that's really what we, the audience, I'm, I consider myself the first listener. That's really what we want. And I know it was a little bit of a, a curveball from what we were planning to talk about just WrestleMania 11. But when you said you hadn't read the observer, I wanted to share that story with you because it was so inside baseball that I had never, I'd a never heard it. B never considered it because we, as fans, we're interested in the mechanics of how to put together a match and what works and, and what doesn't work, but more importantly, the why, you know, that's the reason people are listening to this podcast. I mean, candidly, everybody listening to this watch WrestleMania 11 or could turn this off and go watch WrestleMania 11. 
but they want to hear the story behind the story. So you do a the story then. I yeah. got to tell you a story that kind of relates to this. Uh, doing the uh, meet and greet last night at NWA. Yeah. People coming through. We had some podcast listeners, gave out koozies. I would always say, hey, this is on Conrad. It's not on me. These are on Conrad. We had, we had fun with it. Um, but uh, the old proverbial saying, Jeff, I hated you. Yeah. And actually, my son hated you because I hated you. And he'd watch you on YouTube and he hated you. But no. That damn Conrad Thompson, he said, your story's going to be interesting. And I said, bullshit. You got about three months in. And I said, I'm going to give it a shot. He started listening, blah, blah. And I asked him Conrad last night. I said, come on now. Now, why did you hate me? He said, anybody could have beat your ass back then. I said, oh, can you care to elaborate there, pal? He goes, oh, God, I wanted to kick your ass and just knew I could do it. And I go, hmm, how about that? Job well done. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, but no, the, th the thing being is in those enhancement matches and whether it was Pat or Jack Lanza, Chief J Strongboat, those guys in enhancement matches, look, you could go out and do a move set. And like you said, Scott, I always wanted to take shout out to Marty Gardner, whoever I was working with. I always wanted to give my enhancement guys probably just push the line where Vince would say, damn, Jeff, you're giving him the whole match. I wanted to push it right up to that because if the people think the enhancement talent can kick my ass, well, then the Razor's going to beat me in 30 seconds. And if I just escape, I win. Yes. Yeah. So it was good. NWA was fun last night. Well, listen, guys, we, uh, we appreciate you being patient with us. This is really the first time Jeff and I have been able to speak since he's been out of town and I have too, but we're excited to talk about Royal Rumble. I want to mention briefly, Jeff, we're Idiot. doing what we can to try to celebrate Scott's legacy. We just did uh, over on adfreeshows.com. And I think it's in one of the podcast feeds. I need to see which one we did like a tribute to the bad guy, but we're going to be recording, uh, as, as you and I are recording this tomorrow, uh, Jake, the snake, myself and diamond Dallas page are all going to have probably the most emotional conversation about Scott Hall ever. So if you're looking for more Scott Hall content, let me recommend DDP snake pit. I don't reckon it'll air this week, but maybe next week, um, mm -hmm. it's going to be, I'm trying to gear up for it because just as the podcast, you and I did, I actually, I did an ask Conrad anything last week, Jeff, and somebody said, Hey, what's the most important podcast or the one where, when you clicked stop, where you were like, Hey, if I never do another one. Uh, I, I could go out happy with that one. I named our Owen episode because that wasn't oh, wow. really a podcast. That was an emotional experience. And that's what I expect this one to be. So if you're looking for more Scott Hall content, not just about wrestling, but there will be wrestling in there, but about the guy. Yep. Tune in to DDP snake pit. Uh, it's free anywhere. You enjoy podcasts, not behind a paywall. We want everybody to see it. Because uh, the, the crew over there at DDP's place, they do a great job on the video too. So it'll be on YouTube, but, but everywhere you enjoy podcasts. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you can notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.